It's a loving father. It's a very I have no description. I thank him for all his mercies, all his care, his love for all that he's done, all that he's doing right now, and all that he's yet to do. Uh, not too long, myself and uh, my wife were praying. She, she says something that, that baffles me. She said, Jesus Christ is so wonderful. She said, what have you seen again? She said, honey, can you imagine? When Jesus Christ turned bread, when Jesus Christ feed the people, 7,000 people with fish and bread, it was in the desert. I said, yes. The desert is a place of little or no rainfall. They are, they are, they, I don't think there will be water there. But the Bible did not say that people complain of water. When they were eating the fish and the bread, water was following. Hey, this is wonderful. Say, how did he give water to almost 7,000 people? You know how bread is when you're eating bread. But they never complain of water. Whatever Christ does is complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. When Jesus do anything, he do it completely. I say, woman, this is a revelation. Sister, brother, whatever God is doing right now for you, it shall complete it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our God is a wonderful God. When He give you food, He add water to it. When He give you blessing, He add health to it for you to enjoy it. That is the God we are serving. Praise the Lord. Amen. Tonight we have a message from our Father, which I know is going to be a blessing to me, a blessing to you, a blessing to every one of us. Tonight is our night of Thanksgiving, so be patient because it's going to be wonderful tonight. The message says, the ever thankful people of God. The ever thankful people of God. Are you among these people? The people of God are people who are ever thankful. Always thankful. This is the reason the Lord gave birth to us. That we may thank him. That we may bless him. So the people the Lord is talking to tonight are people who are always thankful. The ever thankful people of God. Not complaining children of God. Not murmuring children of God. People who are always thankful to him. Those are the people the Lord is expecting in heaven someday. But you know why? In heaven is always joy. Praise Master Jesus. He said to us in Psalm 105, verse 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. The ever thankful people of God make know the deed of God to his children. Thank him for what he's done. Thank him for the life he's given you. Thank him because it's a wonderful God. First Thessalonians 5 verse 18. In everything, give thanks. In everything, ever thankful. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ concerning you. The will of God concerning Sister Comfort is that for her to always give thanks to the Lord in every situation. The, 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 the plan for you, the will of God for you, Sister Charity, is that you will always be giving thanks to Him. And the more you do that, the more is being fulfilled in your life. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy is durable forever. If not for the mercy of God, sister, bless your mom, we will be messed up by the devil. The mercy of God sustained you. So give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 107, verse 1. 
Give thanks always for the Lord. Give thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For all things. So you go. For all things. Good or bad, give him thanks. You know why? God, that is the will of the Lord concerning you. You are an ever thankful daughter of God. Ever grateful children of God. That's who we ought to be. But it's so sad in that, that some of us, we don't know how to do that. Ephesians 5, verse 20. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. To the which also you accord in one body. And be ye thankful. For you to be a member of the body of Christ, be thankful. Just as my brother said just now, people are at their language in the sin. They don't know what is salvation. Out of three or seven billion people in the world, you are called out of darkness. Sister Joy Ikimere is enough to say, Father, thank you. Be ye thankful for your salvation. For that is the will of God concerning your life. Philippians 4, verse, I mean, James chapter 1, verse 17. Praise Master Jesus. Where I don't know just now is Colossians 3, verse 15. Colossians 3, verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. Colossians 3, 15. So every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of light. He is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You are the gift of God. You are perfect. You are made in the image of God. You are from above. And someday, sooner than later, you also go back to where you came from. You are a perfect gift. Give glory to God for your life, for being a perfect gift from the Lord. You are a wonderful creator. You are well structured. You are handsome and beautiful. It's all the hand work of God. Look at yourself and see God in you. Say, Father, I thank you. I bless your name because I am a perfect gift of the Lord. The breath you are breathing is, is a perfect gift of the Lord. The life you are living is a perfect gift of the Lord. Everything God made is perfect. And not just that you, are, you were made, you were made in his image and likeness. Why can't you celebrate him? Why can't you glorify him? It's worthy to be praised. Philippians 4, verse 6. Hmm. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanks given, let your supplication let your request be made known unto God. The more you are praising him, he know what you are looking for. Praise him and he will raise down your blessing to you. Thank him and he will do a tangible thing in your life tonight. Praise Master Jesus. Second, I mean Philippians 4 verse 6. Thanks be unto God for he is for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 15. Thank him for the wonderful gift he's given you. For the life he's given you. For the land you are. Thank him. Many people are eager to be what you are today, but they have not been able to attain to that level. But you in that level are saying, God, you've done nothing to me. You've done it for me. And people are dying and fast and praying to black you. But you are saying, Father, you've done nothing. What a life. Ever thankful people of God. Not just once in a month. Not just once in a year. But always. The Lord is looking for people even after tonight. You will keep on thanking him. We come to the and say, Father, I thank you for, to, for last night. No matter what happened, if not for you, the oppression they would have killed me. For they to be able to get to where I am to oppress me, if not you, they would have killed me, they would have snuffed me away. 
Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my life. The ever thankful children of God. Are you sick? Thank you because you are not dead. Do have document? Thank you because you are not in prison. Thank you. Are you in prison? Thank you because you are not executed. You are not dead. In every situation, thank you. Because those in the grave cannot thank him anymore. Praise Master Jesus. Praise you the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. But it's good for his mercy and joy forevermore. Psalm 106, verse 1. Children of God, give praise to the Lord tonight. Thank him ever after. Because the heaven we are working for, the what heaven we are going to is always thankable. Thank hallelujah. Oh, Zana, glory be to this. The song sing, sing there. Hallelujah. The Lord has given us victory. Hallelujah. It is permanent in our life. That is the song we sing over there. So that when you get there, you will not be a moron. Learn it now to thank Him. Angels are always praising Him. The 24 elders bow down to celebrate Him. What we do there in heaven is praising and praising and praising. There's no more money there. So if you must be there, learn to do it now. Praise Master Jesus. Are you thankful? Are you thankful? No matter what. Perhaps you have lost your job recently. Uh, the economic, economic has continued to struggle. Europe is deteriorating every day. And many car is shrinking. The whole world is in disarray. Maybe you have lost your job because some, because the economic downturn. But I tell you, praise him. Glorify him. Or you may have lost your health. I am sick. I can't praise him. Or you, maybe you must have lost someone. So circumstances can be tremendously difficult. But even so, we are to praise the name of the Lord. We all have much to be thankful for. You lost a job, there's something to thank God for. You lost someone, there's something to thank God for. You are sick, there's something to thank God for. Look, look with me at the story. I will tell you a story of a man. Look with me tonight at the story of a man who had every right to be bitter, but he wasn't. Listen carefully to this story. This man is a man that would have had every right to say, Father, I can't take you anymore. I have done enough yet. Look at the life I am living. I don't know what you have been through. I don't think it's more than the story of this man that will tell us right now. Now, this man was locked up in a place. Nobody cared about him anymore. He was in chain constantly. Constantly in chain. Wherever he goes, they flog him, they beat him. He was always beaten. He was always, he was always chasing. He was moving from death to death every day. It was all, it was, this man was dwelling in the shadow of death. Throughout his life, he was always in the shadow of death. The next footstep in the corridor, this man had, he knew he might be, I come again, the next footstep in the corridor, he knew might be those of the God taking him away to his execution. This man was locked up for years. Nobody cared about him. But all of a sudden, she heard of, I mean, he heard of footsteps. And what are the footsteps that came? The footsteps of those that will execute him. The footsteps of those that will kill him. The footsteps of those that will behead him. That was the footsteps he heard. 
His only bed was, was the hard, cold stone floor of the dark. Crippled prison cell. Not an hour passed when he was free from the constant irritation of the chains and the pain of the iron. Marcus cutting in into his wrists and legs. I come again. Hmm. His only bed was the hard, cold stone floor of the dark. Crippled, his prison cell. Not an hour passed when he was free from the constant irritation of the chains and the pains of the iron manacles cutting into his wrists and legs. Separated from friends, unjustly accused, brutally treated. If ever a person had a right to complain, it was this man. If ever a man had any right to complain, it was this man, languishing almost forgotten in a harsh Roman prison. Languishing almost forgotten in a harsh Roman prison. But instead of complaining, instead of complaints, his lips rang with words of praise and thanks given. This was a man. The man was the Apostle Paul, a man I love so much. The man was the Apostle Paul, a man who had learned the meaning of true thanksgiving. A man who had learned the true meaning of thanksgiving. A man I care about. A man I cherish so much. Even in the midst of great adversity, Earlier, when he had been in prison in Rome, Paul wrote to you and I. In Romans chapter number 5, verse 19 and 20. Speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This was written to you, Apostle, Apostle Peace, in prison. With chains. A man in chain was writing to you, a free man. Verse 20. Give me thanks always. This man have every to say, Father, I can't take you again. Every blessed day I'll be punished, I'll be accused, I'm always in chain. But this same man wrote to Sister Blessing Omogui. Road to Apostle Emmanuel, road to Sister Ahimema. We that are home, we are enjoy life. We need Pure is there. We need water is there. Whatever we need is there. But this man in prison was still consoling me as his charity. Yet we don't be consoled. This man in prison he said is consoling me as his comfort. Yet we don't be consoled. And we are saying, what? what Hmm. We are saying we are going to heaven. We are saying we are going to heaven. <laughs> Give it thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul says so. Not in party, not in the jet, not in the navigator. In prison, he was writing this. He was a man like you and I. A man with flesh and blood. A man that had breath in his nose tree. Yet, sister, I did to say, hey, it is too much for me now. That to say, hey, I've done so much. Why has God forsaken me? But this man was always in prison. Yet, consoling people are there. <laughs> Think of it. Always give it thanks for everything, no matter the circumstances. Thanksgiving 
for the Apostle Paul was not a one a once a year celebration. Hear me out, people of God. Hear me out, children of the Most High. I'm sent to give all this story today. I'm sent to tell all this story so that you will be encouraged and you will be ashamed of yourself. I'll be ashamed of myself because of documents you are refused to thank him. Because of, I don't know because of what. Apostle Paul never think about wife, children. No, he was all for Christ. Yet, he was always beating flock stone. If Christ would, if Christ we 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 give jet to anybody, it should be Apostle Paul. If Christ should come down from heaven and rain heaven money upon somebody, it should be Apostle Paul. What has Apostle Mamma done to warrant complaining? When I got this story this, this evening, I said, Father, shame on me. Father, I am sorry. Say, so tell my children. Tell them the message a prisoner is, is writing to somebody who is free, and yet he, he is free, is not be consoled. You are still complaining. Hell is waiting. Think of it. Always give you thanks for everything, no matter the circumstances. Thanks given for Apostle Paul was not a once a year celebration, but a daily reality that changed his life and made him a joyful person in every situation. <laughs> that made him a joyful person in every situation. He trained himself up to that level. Let's do something about ourselves now. The Lord is speaking again. Don't just write yes after today, start complaining again. That yes is not allowed. Don't just say, hey, thank God, tomorrow morning you change the story again, start complaining. Today, learn to always be thankful to the Lord. That was the life of a prisoner, Apostle Paul. Hmm. Praise Master Jesus. The thank given, the giving of thanks to God for all his blessing should be one of the most distinctive mark of the believer in Jesus Christ. We must not allow a spirit of ingratitude to harden our heart and chill our relationship with God and with others. Not to turn us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. I come again. Nothing turn us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing we do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than true spirit of thanksgiving. Nothing, 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 nothing. We do you more good to restore, nothing, nothing we do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than a true spirit of thanksgiving. In the ancient world, Leprosy was a terrible disease. It hopelessly disqualified those who had it, and it permanently cut them off from normal society. Without exception, every leper yearned for one thing, to be healed. One day, one certain day, Ten lepers approached Jesus outside a village, loudly plowing, plowing with him, pleading with him to heal them. In an instant, he restored them all to perfect health. All to perfect health. But only one came back. Only one of the lepers cured came back and thanked him. 
All the rest left without a word of thanks. Their mind preoccupied only with themselves, gripped with a spirit of ingratitude. The rest nine flew away. Hey, now I, I can make money now. Hey, now I can have document now. Now that I have document now, I can travel all over the world now. They forgot the state they were, they were before. But only one of them, the member where Christ took him from, came back and thanked him. What about you? What about you? Today, to, to ingratitude. Today, to ingratitude and unthankful. Uh, and thanklessness are far too common. Children forget to thank their parents for all they, they do for them. Common courtesy is scorned, is, is scorned. We take for granted the way that others help us. Uh, uh, this person helped me. It's because I am an apostle, that's why she did it. She's afraid of me, that's why she did it. Stupidity. Because I'm too much, that's why he's blessing me. Who told you? You are nothing. The Lord just used that one to bless you. If she don't do it, you can't do nothing to her. You are not the one, you are not the one, you are not the one keeping her alive. Whatever anybody does to you, it got God asked to do it. Not because you are anything. Ingratitude. Praise Master Jesus. We take for granted the way the order help us. Above all, we fail to thank God for his blessings. Ingratitude is a sin, just as sure as a as as is lying or stealing or immorality or any other sign condemned by, by, by the Bible. One of the Bibles indicates against rebellious humanity is that although they knew God, they neither glorify him as God nor gave thanks to him. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Though they knew God, they never glorify him as God. They were never thankful, but they were reprobate. And closing because of time. An, an ungrateful heart is a heart that is cold towards God and indifferent to his mercy and love. It is a heart that has forgotten how dependent we are on God for everything. From one end of the Bible to the other, we are commanded to be thankful. In fact, thankfulness is in nature, natural outflowing of a heart that is attained to God. Psalm 47, verse 7. Sing unto the Lord. I close with this. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon Upon the harps, unto our God, sing praise, be thankful, be thankful, be thankful. Praise Master Jesus. And Apostle Paul told us in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 15, be ye thankful, be ye thankful. Praise Master Jesus. Brethren, we have heard the story of the ten lepers. We have heard the story of Apostle Paul. We have seen scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. Think about your life tonight and know if you will be ashamed of yourself. But we say, Ah, Father, I have been so thankful to you. When all this thing came to me this evening, I was ashamed of myself. I will look for a hole to enter because I have been an ingrate. When I see what daddy told me about Apostle Paul, my head was big. Children of God, let us be careful and thankful. May the Lord bless the world in our heart tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the word of encouragement to you and I. Let us go back home after tonight and keep on thanking him for his mercy. For you are a perfect gift from him. Are you out there? You are not born again. You are ingrat. You are ingrat. If you are not accepted, just because another person said you, you are ingrat. Because you have done what no man could do for you. Yet you are still walking. Yet you are still marching in the blood of the ground. 
you are causing yourself destruction. He come at me and I said to him, his hands are open for you tonight. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I've heard the word tonight. I've heard it in a different way. How ungratitude, how ingratitude you have been. Father, have mercy not upon me tonight. Forgive me tonight, Lord. I come to you tonight. Take my name away from the book of death. And please write it in the book of life. I accept you, O Lord, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and personal Savior tonight. Come into my life. Come and dwell in me. I am born again tonight. All things are passed away. And all things have become new. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for saving my soul. Thank you, ancients of days, for bringing such a word my way tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I pray with you. Father, behold your daughter, behold your son, have surrendered their life to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, on their own, they cannot carry on. Strengthen them, O Lord. Your grace that was sufficient for Apostle Paul, Daddy, give it to your daughter, your son, and whoever will hear this word that surrender to you. Father, give them that grace that was, up, that was upon Apostle Paul, Lord. Give it to them, O God, so that, O God, they say, crown that your son, Apostle Paul, is enjoying today. You will also enjoy it, O God, in time to come in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, my God, I pray for myself. I pray for everyone that heard this word. Father, most of us are ashamed right now. Just the way I'm ashamed. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that same grace you gave to your son, Apostle Paul, give it to me. Give it to your children, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. May this word, oh God, not be against me, nor against anyone that heard this word, oh God. Father, my soul is bleeding. How, in, how ungrateful I have been. Lord Jesus, today I have learned to be grateful to you. I have learned to be a grateful son to you. Father, have mercy upon us all, forgive us our sins, and take us back again tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we give thanks to you tonight, oh God, help us to also give thanks to you after now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.